courage, I think, can be exercised in a variety of ways in, in political discourse. And it's not always through verbal violence. I think sometimes courage is actually exercised in uh, verbal discipline. Hi, welcome to Coffee and Conversations, where we talk about two of life's greatest joys, coffee and faith. And my name is Sophia, and I'm one of the content creators here at Old North Church. And I'm joined by Pastor Bruce from our young adult ministry. How are you doing, Bruce? Doing great. Yeah. Coffee up, ready to go. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks yeah. for joining me on this. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun. I'm excited to see what we do, uh, who we invite yeah. onto our yeah. show, what we talk who, about. Who so, do we have today? We have a very special guest. I'm not sure if you've you know, seen him around, maybe. Looks familiar. Yeah. Yeah, he looks a little familiar. We have Pastor Nick, senior pastor of our church. How are you doing, Pastor Nick? Great. Good. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. And um, today we're talking about a very important topic that I think is um, a lot more pressing now that we're two weeks away from the election, but we're talking about politics. Yes. A fun, fun topic. Do you like talking about politics? <laughs> oh, yeah. Not so much? It depends, I guess. I do like talking and about who it. you're talking with. It depends on who I'm talking <laughs> right. with. Absolutely. So, Bruce yeah. and I like to talk about politics. A lot. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot. So this yeah. is going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And whether you at home are stirring your own iced latte, whether you're brewing your own cup of joe, or just in need of a spiritual pick-me-up, you are in the right place. And without further ado, Bruce, would you like to tell us what we're drinking today? We actually had a coffee tasting uh, thing that we did in the office today. Uh, we're celebrating past our uh, pastors and uh, we're drinking Peru, which was part of the tasting. Mm. I like it. It doesn't taste like Peru. It's a little, it's a little fruity. Peru yeah. coffees, as much as I know, are not supposed to be fruity, but this is great. Yeah, this one definitely has a little bit of a fruitiness to it that I wasn't, when you said fruit, I wasn't yeah. expecting that. So, so I want to start off with a fun fact about coffee that I, I want to see how you guys react. What do you think is the connection between a webcam and coffee? <laughs> mm, is this like a joke? No, it it's actually like a, okay, it's like a fact. It's like a fact. A webcam. Yep. And coffee. And coffee. Mm -hmm. That's a great question that I don't know. I have to. no idea. Yeah. So actually, uh, the webcam was created because some uh, scientists at Cambridge in the, in the UK were, they had obviously they were brewing coffee in the office. They wanted to see and monitor how their supply was going. So they created like a camera to watch their coffee. Because, because people were watch stealing their it, coffee? No, just, just to know when they need to brew another cup. Uh. So, so that so the webcam so was so when it got low that's yep. when I that's what wow. you did in Cambridge so they need like they that's needed great. to like monitor it yep. so that's that's the connection there wow yeah there it's crazy go. that is crazy <laughs> Fun fact of the day <laughs> I mean with how much coffee our office goes through I feel like we would benefit from something like that <laughs> right. yeah hmm. yeah okay. we have benefited yeah and was this um, made in your French press made in my French press uh, with a bunch of two ways to live stickers yeah. <laughs> Shout out uh, Matthias Media right Let's there. Start. Let's start. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, um, without further ado, I think we should get brewing on this conversation. Let's get brewing. All right. Pastor Nick. Let's go. Yep. So um, as we approach elections and um, this season of elections, um, I feel like myself including, we get caught up in divisiveness and a lot of just division as far as um, – you know, candidates and worry about policies going into place and things like that. And um, we were hoping that in this conversation today, Pastor Nick, that you would help us be able to practically think through how we can better ourselves and um, how we can interact with people who don't agree with us, how we can play our part as Christians without, you know, compromising our beliefs and our mission ultimately to serve Christ and lead others towards him. So, um, so why should Christians even think about politics and why should we be involved if we're serving the kingdom? Yeah. yeah. Why do we have to serve our earthly kingdom, I guess? Yeah. So well, I mean, it's, it. yeah, it's a, it's a great question, I think, with a multifaceted answer. Um, the most basic reason why Christians should care about politics is because it affects your life. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that politics is not just this... Um, 
series of ideas that float out there in the ether, mm -hmm. but that the policies that are enacted have very real implications for how you live on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, if you are invested in the well-being of your family, right. your friends, your community, uh, then in some way, shape, or form, you'll be influenced by politics. Mm -hmm. um, and the degree, of course, to which you are varies greatly depending upon where you are and what the particular issues at hand are. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, the the people that would uh, maybe question that involvement would uh, maybe use the argument that it causes a lot of fear and anxiety. Mm. And so um, a lot of people now, particularly a couple of weeks before the elections, are very anxious and fearful. Yeah. So firstly, do you feel the same? Would you agree that people are anxious and fearful? And uh, how would you comment on that? Uh, just the fear and the anxiety. Because that should typically cause us to we run away from things that are scary. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I agree with you. I think there are a lot of people that are... Um, experiencing fear and anxiety, and that is intentional. Mm. That is intentional on the part of news media. Right. It's intentional on the part of different political candidates as they try to contrast their platform from their opponent's platform. Right. And it's it's sort of like the oldest trick in the book, isn't it? Like, yeah. If right. I can make you afraid of the other person, then you're gonna vote for me. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I can make you afraid of what they represent or what they're going to do, then you're gonna think what I represent or what I do right. is mm -hmm. going to be better. Uh, and that's that's sort of politics 101 or cam campaigning 101 in right. some ways. It's not just creating a positive vision, but it's also creating a negative vision of your opponent. And of course, the news media um, and the internet media thrive and actually make a lot of money off of our fear. Right. Yeah. That we become the product. Mm. Uh, and if we can keep people anxious, keep people afraid, then they have to continue to tune in to right. see how these things are going to be resolved, yeah. if yeah. they are. So an ongoing fear. Um, so I'm sure you, uh, you've voted in a couple presidential elections. <laughs> um, how, many, how many so far? Not, not to age you, you look 21. Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so I turned 18 in 1996. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, Clinton? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what, was it always like this? Like, did you always feel like there was this much fear and anxiety around election time in years past? I think that every generation feels unique pressures mm. and every election cycle has unique pressures. I think whether it's in politics or sports or anything, yeah. people always say it's never been like this before. Yeah. Our generations experienced the right. greatest basketball player of all time right. or the worst political season of all time. Right. Um, and so, you know, I don't get caught too much into that hype. Mm -hmm. So many elections uh, have said again and again, if this person is elected, it represents the end. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it's all going to fall apart. Right. And mm -hmm. I, I think democracy, thankfully, is much more flexible and mm -hmm. elastic than that. I right. do think there are, of course, unique threats that are that are designed to undermine the nature right. of the democratic process, right. yeah. and that we would be foolish to ignore those. Mm -hmm. um, but also, our country has shown an incredible resiliency, mm. which has been great. So, what you're saying is that if a political candidate that you don't vote for gets elected into office, you're not going to move to Canada, or no, you know. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's so funny that people always say that they never actually move. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. interesting. I mean, there's very few people. I'm moving to Europe. I'm moving to Canada. I'm moving to wherever. But for some reason, they don't go. And right. the reason why they don't go is because even though our country has phenomenal flaws, uh -huh. uh, there are still phenomenal benefits yes. right, to mm -hmm. being part of this nation yeah. and uh, things that once you actually start to count huh. the cost of, uh -huh. you say, I don't think I want to go to someplace yeah. else unless there's a specific purpose or reason, to build not that. just sort of a general reaction right. to yeah. not get yeah. in my way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so from what I'm hearing you say, the pressures, the fear, manufactured in some senses, but in some senses warranted. There are sure. things to be worried and concerned about. Yeah. So the, we're not reactionary, mm -hmm. as it were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Helpful. Yeah. Cool. Um, and I think, like, to bounce off of that, 
let's talk about how we should approach our engagement with politics and what the Bible says specifically about elections or voting. Can you give us any kind of insight into that? Yeah. Um, you know, the scripture tells us to pray for our leaders, that we would be able to live peaceful and quiet lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting because most of mm -hmm. us don't think that's our goal. Right. Um, and yet Paul uh, writes to Timothy that that is indeed one of the goals of mm -hmm. politics. Mm -hmm. uh, Romans points us to the fact that God raises up leaders and casts leaders down, that leaders and governments ordained by God, even if they're ones that we don't like, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. still serve a greater and divine purpose, mm -hmm. and ultimately, in some ways, function as the arm of the Lord in bringing justice, yeah. um, which is hard to reckon sometimes with things that we see to be injustice, especially injustice that might be even perpetrated by certain governments yeah. or certain yeah. government policies. Yeah. Uh, and yet, nevertheless, when you take a big step back at human history and you mm -hmm. say, what is happening? God is the one that yeah. builds nations and and allows them to crumble or even causes them to crumble. Yeah. Yeah. He's the one that raises up leaders yeah. and casts them aside. And sometimes we perceive those purposes in real time and very often we don't. Right. But as the book of Revelation has reminded us again and again uh, that the Lord is on the throne <laughs> and that King Jesus is the only one who's able to open the seals of God's plan of mm -hmm. judgment and redemption in the world mm -hmm. and he is actively doing it. Yep. So Absolutely. that gives me just a great confidence at the end of yeah. the day yeah. to yeah. say, you know, as a Christian, um, you, Sophia, you asked, you know, how, why are we engaged in this country, this kingdom, and we have a kingdom of our own, right. uh, the kingdom of the kingdom of God, and we do have a foot in both kingdoms, but there is one kingdom that's higher than the other, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's the kingdom of, kingdom of God. And so I am yeah. firmly planted in that kingdom, and mm -hmm. that gives me a great confidence and freedom to do the work uh, in this nation that we have during this season of yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. So part of, obviously, political engagement is uh, recognizing we're engaging with people we disagree with, yeah. right? It feels like, this is not a question, we, pr we probably don't have time to talk about whether it's true. It feels like we're divided, right? People are divided. So people, whether it's on Facebook um, or, or wherever, yeah. uh, it feels like there are two different sort of visions of America. And Christians are like sort of in the hodgepodge. Mm -hmm. How do we, representing this other kingdom, engage people that are on the other side? That feel like they have nothing in common with even. Now, it's arguable whether that's even true or not, right? Whether we're actually that divided. But how do we engage love with love and humility yeah. with uh, people we disagree with? There's, I think there's a lot we could say about that. I mean, the first thing that I would say is uh, when you're thinking about politics and talking about political ideas or political candidates, it's really, really helpful to actually know right. what you're talking about. Yeah. And we live in a time right now of sound bites. Mm -hmm. We live in a time of Instagram reels and Facebook reels. Yeah. Yeah. We live in a time of short spurts that are designed to to engage really big issues right. in 144 characters or less, yeah. which is impossible to do with yeah. Apple with any level of nuance or right. even honesty. Mm -hmm. And so I think. You know, first and foremost, I would encourage people, if you want to do the hard work, and right. it is actually hard work, yeah. it's very easy to just scroll through your phone on Facebook or Instagram yeah. and pick out the talking points against the person that you don't like anyway. Right. Say, well, she does this or he says right. that. Yeah. Um, that's a lot easier than actually trying to read on what somebody says mm -hmm. in a more comprehensive way yeah. about a policy. But you can't have meaningful conversation until you are willing to actually learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Uh, number two, I would say, um, don't take everything so personally. <laughs> <laughs> Our time right now is so, we are, as a, as a country, as a culture, have become so weak mm -hmm. and thin-skinned yeah. to the point where if you disagree with me and I disagree with you, 
then that somehow becomes an attack on you yeah. right. instead of an attack on yeah. the idea. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Yeah. And I mean, you know, Amy and I lived in England for three years, right. uh, eons ago now, it seems like. But <laughs> one of the best things about the British culture is that you can vehemently argue with somebody, yeah. even to the point of passion, <laughs> right? and then still go down to the pub yeah. at the end of the day and continue on with your friendship. Right. Yeah. And it's almost sort of like a, it's a, hmm. it's a, if you turn it to a personal attack, it becomes, it's the sign of your weakness. Right. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, you can, you couldn't win the argument, so you attacked my, so you attacked my person. Right. You attacked yeah. my character. Yeah. Um, which is just a sign of intellectual weakness. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, and I love that about that culture. I wish mm. we had, we used to have that in this culture. I mm-hmm. wish we would recover some of that thick skin, engage yeah. with the idea, don't make everything personal. Um, and so I think that takes, though, I think that can be intentionally done. Yeah. I think you can walk into a political conversation, even one that you feel passionate about, mm-hmm. and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk out of this conversation and still try to maintain a relationship with this, with person, this person I'm talking yeah. to. Yeah, that's good. Um, and then thirdly, I would say, you know, you use the word love. Yeah. And the question is, how do I express love to someone that I disagree with uh-huh. or even someone that could, I just said, don't make it personal, but in some cases it, it will get there. Yeah. Jesus tells us to love our enemies. What <laughs> does that mean as regard as with regard to political engagement? And a friend of mine, um, I think models this really well mm-hmm. um, in, in saying, Part of my mission as a Christ follower is to express love in the midst of disagreement. And that means I'm going to meet with people face to face. I'm not going to take pot shots from a distance. I'm not going to hide behind a computer screen or a cell phone screen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually talk to them and Mm -hmm. look them in the eye. And they're going to look me in the eye. Uh, Secondly, I'm going to listen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask a lot of questions and I'm going to listen. And then thirdly, I'm going to communicate what I think and believe with an appropriate tone right. that tries yeah. to communicate that disposition. All of that needs to happen intentionally. Right. Well, you can't have tone over text message. Right. It's just not, unless yeah. you put, you know, a laughing emoji or an angry emoji, but then it's like, it can be so misconstrued. So I think doing those convers- having yeah. those conversations in person is extremely important. Well, so no social always, media. You, I mean, uh, well, people assume the worst tone too. Right. On social media, <laughs> right. over text message, yeah. over email even, right. if you want to have serious conversation about stuff mm-hmm. and it, it will inherently have tone, they will assume the worst tone if it's across yeah. one of those digital media. Yes. Yeah. 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 So what you're saying is like, I could be out of the job since social media is just not. <laughs> okay. Don't use Noted. It. Okay. Noted. All right. Work on that tone. Yeah. <laughs> work, I'll work, I'll work on that tone. So um, like you said about how we need to have those conversations and how those are important to have in person, um, we can see, and I'm sure we've been in conversations where they quickly go out of hand. Yeah. So you know, what can we do to avoid that? How can we take practical steps, like you said, to be open and to listen? Like, what does that actually look like? Yeah, well, I think, I think some of it is a mindset and disposition going into the conversation, right? Um, There are some people that would say, if you aren't willing to go to war over your political positions, and by that, I mean, relational war, verbal war, Mm -hmm. then, then you're not courageous. Yeah. Um, and I would argue against that to say, actually, um, courage, I think, can be exercised in a variety of ways in, in political discourse. Mm-hmm. And it's not always through verbal violence. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, uh, I think sometimes courage is actually exercised in uh, verbal discipline. Mm. Mm-hmm. And That's good. It's sometimes exercised in willing to give a little ground to get a little ground yeah. and, and things like that. And so I think that that's part of it. I think, you know, um, secondly, you know, there's this, this dynamic of social media, which is everywhere now, especially, you know, really across most age, age segments now. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's interesting to watch different people engage politically based on either their political party or or what age age segment they're in. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. But I've become convinced that there, you are not going to convince anybody mm -hmm. to change their political position because of what you post on Facebook <laughs> or Instagram right. or mm -hmm. Twitter. Yeah. Um, now, I know that there are companies out there that put millions of dollars into manipulating um, elections through advertising right. in those mediums yeah. or through mm -hmm. creating certain types of video content for those mediums. And that's different. Right. That's different than Bruce saying, vote for so-and-so because it's the only Christian option. Right. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to yeah. convince anybody yeah. in that way. Mm -hmm. And so I would just say like, to anybody who's listening, mm -hmm. if, you, if that's you, <laughs> just stop. Like, it's not really helpful, yeah. uh, and it's actually going to cost you more mm -hmm. uh, than you realize by mm -hmm. way of the long run. Because why would I want to, <laughs> why would I want to, caught to lose a relationship right. because of something I posted on social media? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense yeah. to me at all, especially when in the course of that relationship, I still might have the chance to to either learn something or to influence somebody. Right. Yeah. If mm -hmm. I keep the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's through maybe healthier means of engagement. So those are some things that immediately come to mind. Mm -hmm. um, lower the temperature, but mm -hmm. still care about the issues. Yeah. yeah. And he, and here here's maybe another one, and this is I think really important for Christians. Because you hear all the time things like, "Well, he's just a one issue voter." Mm -hmm. Or she's, she only cares about two things, right. and that's it. Mm -hmm. And that's meant to communicate that um, you're not thoughtful right. or you don't care about the comprehensive nature of things. And I, there's a couple things I would say on that probably. Mm -hmm. Number one, I think as Christians, we are called to make moral evaluations about mm -hmm. political things. And that all of those moral evaluations are not equal in their weight. Right. Mm -hmm. So we do hold some issues as more important than others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, I would say, just because we hold moral uh, issues in a rank order in our mind, mm -hmm. there is also we're also called to think strategically. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If there is something that is um, yeah. that is not really an issue on the on the ballot or not really an yeah. issue that's going to change in the nature of the country mm -hmm. is that where you're going to plant your flag for any given election right. even though nothing's going to change off of it mm -hmm. right um that's not very strategic thinking i don't mm -hmm. think yeah. and so i think i think we have to balance those things yeah. right and to say yeah. like okay yes god calls us to live a certain way mm -hmm. and to treat people a certain way and there's a difference between sin and righteousness mm -hmm. uh, in this world and we want to stand for righteousness and yeah. at the same time, we want to think strategically about how, how things change yeah. around us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's almost like, a, which you kind of touched on, like the, the humanizing nature of the gospel is that you are able to look at somebody, make a, a political call that you're like, that, that doesn't make any sense to mm -hmm. me, but still appreciate that they are probably using a different greed, yeah. making the same thoughtful evaluations, albeit they reach a conclusion that you that you disagree with. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And, and I would say I know brothers and sisters that are in different political positions than me who I vehemently disagree with about sure. things that I care deeply about. Yeah. yeah. And at the end of the day, they place those things differently on the moral spectrum of importance right. mm -hmm. than I do. Yeah. Um, and knowing that mm -hmm. helps me to engage them in a meaningful way yeah. mm -hmm. um, that I think can, can still keep peace. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's so good. That's really good. Um, let's talk about practical steps. You already mentioned a couple of them as we prepare for this election. Yeah. Um, one, you said be informed. Mm -hmm. How? And, I, and I'll give you a couple of other things. That, uh, so we want to know the issues. We want to know the candidates. How... Where do we go? How do we actually get informed? Mm -hmm. MSNBC and Fox News. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the only two. Right. I think um, I think it's helpful to recognize that um, you know our news twenty four hours news mm -hmm. media outlets do have biases yep. attached to them, some more than others, mm -hmm. and it's very easy to enter into an echo chamber and just have 
the things that you think or believe already affirmed right. to you in those short sound bites right. that we talked about, right? Yeah. Yep. So that would be the thing you want to avoid. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a couple of a couple of places to go or to look for, um, you know, the data on different political issues is. There are some websites, I can't, I can't quote them to you off the top of my head, but there are some websites out there that are meant from a much more centrist, objective way to say, yeah. here's where each candidate stands on this issue, this issue, yeah. this issue, this issue, mm-hmm. this issue, and actually gives some citations to validate the claim. And that's yeah. the key thing, right? Yeah. Is right. To say, it's one thing to say, well, Donald Trump believes this or Kamala Harris believes that. Yeah. But a lot of people just make that stuff up, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And so you want to have it, you want to have the claim validated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think to think about what, whatever source you're you're engaging in, uh, what is what is the the aim or the slant of that particular source? Mm-hmm. For example, the Wall Street Journal is a source that I often go to. Yeah. Um, I recognize that the Wall Street Journal is probably best described as center right. It's mm-hmm. not right right. It's not uh, left. It's mm-hmm. close to the center, but slants right. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But their interests are also first and foremost in economic realities. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's not in uh, a variety of other human interests or moral types of issues. Right. They might report on that every now and again. Right. But the thing I like about them as well is that unlike so many other sources, they they tell you mm-hmm. when an opinion column huh. is an opinion column. Mm-hmm. It says right. opinion. Kamala Harris, blank, 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 or opinion, Donald yeah. Trump shouldn't do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And it tells you, this is the author giving his or her opinion yeah. mm-hmm. uh, based on the logic that they derive. Right. And you know that going in. And yeah. so that's really helpful. Uh, I love that kind of, uh, it takes news yeah. analysis and puts it in its right place, mm-hmm. which is different than just reporting of events. Yeah. yeah, I think it provides like a level of transparency that you know going in before you even read the article that it's an opinion and it's yeah. not... Mm-hmm something that's factual because I feel like that's something that I I feel like myself and my generation like we don't really know where to go for news sources like I don't watch cable tv I don't watch news tv like Mm -hmm. and and it's really just because like I know I know what sources there are on tv but I don't really know what to trust because it seems like everybody has their own agenda yeah and it's you know, even if you agree with what they're saying, it's like, okay, well, what's, what's like their purpose in saying it? And like, you can read people's yeah. tone on TV yeah. when sure. they're speaking. Yeah. And so even if you're agreeing with what they're saying, are they saying it in yeah. a tone that is like, ultimately, you know, glorifying to God or, if, or helpful? helpful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if it's beneficial yeah. or if it's just another kind of yeah. slandering mm-hmm. Well, and then the other dynamic of that, too, is, yeah. of course, that political candidates lie yeah. and they change their views yes. based yeah. on what they think is going to help them get elected. Well, who's right? in yeah. the room? Who's in the room, yeah. right? So that just complicates the matter even further. I'd be curious to know from both of you, um, you know, one of the things that I hear and one of the mm-hmm. statistics that I saw recently, especially among Christians, mm-hmm. is that a lot of people just feel like they're going to sit this one out. Mm-hmm. That they're not going to vote because they don't. They either don't like either of the candidates, or yeah. they don't know where to go to get the real truth of where they stand on the issue, right. or it's morally confusing based on their personal histories yeah. uh, versus their political life and the policies that they enact and things like that. Yeah. Do you think that's a big thing among your generation of younger voters and mm-hmm. your generation of a little less younger voters, but right. still pretty young voters? Yeah, I like that young voters. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, I feel like at least with people who I've talked to, um, people my age that I know have said either they won't vote or they don't know who to vote for. Mm. Um, ultimately, I think those people will probably end up not voting at all because mm. it's like, if I don't vote, then maybe I'm not a part of the problem kind right. of a thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I, I kind of understand that from a certain stand, standpoint because it's like, well, if I don't, contribute to one candidate or the other then yeah. I won't feel as guilty my about who clean. yeah my hands yeah. are clean I won't yeah. feel as guilty about like who gets into office mm-hmm. whether I like him or not yeah. um but I mean personally like especially with this election like I've only voted in the 2020 election that was the first election I voted in mm-hmm. and um and so 
I, for this one specifically, I felt like I was not torn, but I just felt like, man, like, if it was up to me, I wouldn't, you know, really vote for either one. Like, but I know, like, as a Christian that I should be involved and I shouldn't just take a seat back because it's like, if I'm not helping, then I don't know. I just feel like it would, it would be, um, it would be taking advantage too of, of like our right as an American yeah. and the freedoms that we have to not mm-hmm. vote and to not at least let our voice be heard because mm-hmm. I am definitely passionate about a lot of the topics yeah. um, of politics. So I want to be able to support someone who I agree with. Yeah. with his, his I was going to ask, is the, is the disengagement like a passionate one, like a protest, like mm. I don't like either, I'm out. Or is it more like, I just don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm out. Like, is it passionate or like, I like feel like, disengaged? I feel like I've seen both sides of it okay. where it's like people are like, oh, well, I don't want this person or this person. I want, you know, somebody younger or I want, right. you know, this yeah. type of person. So I'm just not going to vote for either. And then maybe they'll, you know, our, our country will get the hint that we want somebody different. Yeah. And then I think it also is like the confusion. Like, well, I don't yeah. know who to choose. I don't know, like, where exactly I stand. Mm-hmm. I don't care to see either one in office, so yeah. I'm just going to lay low. Yeah. Yeah, it's very helpful. Uh, I, I guess for me personally, you know, it's my first time voting in a presidential election. Ooh. New American citizen. So I'm very excited to vote. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, not a, I'm not a good... Uh, You're part of the political process yeah, now, Bruce. I'm not, I'm not a good example of somebody who, who's disengaged. Yeah. Uh, so, but I would say generally what I'm observing, like people my age in the early 30s, late 30s, uh, they are pretty involved in the issues like that. Yeah. You know, you, you have young kids, you have, um, I guess, uh, they are thinking more about just the future of their kids. And yeah. so there's, I, I feel like, more engagement. Mm-hmm. Probably my critique of that generation will be, I don't know how much of the hard work w- that you're talking about they're actually doing. Yeah. Is it just like listening to the same guy on a podcast yeah um are you actually like reading the platforms are you doing some of that work i i don't i, I couldn't tell there's something about when you have kids that you, yeah. f- you feel a little more engaged yeah what about your generation so like uh w- w- are you sensing more people saying i'm out or what does that um, look like no not necessarily i think it's um i think it's a mixed bag okay. i mean mm-hmm. you know one statistic that i heard i think just a couple days ago yeah was something like the potential of 40 million Christians Whoa. sitting out of this election. Wow. Whoa. So when you think about the population of our country being, what, 350 million, 40, 40 million. million Christians sitting out because they That's don't like problem. either candidate. Yeah. That's a staggering number. That is staggering. And um, I don't know if it's accurate or not, right. but even yeah. if it's, you know, even if even if half of that was right, actually exactly, right. yeah. exactly, and so that's a lot of people. I would say that's concerning, and especially for me, I would I would encourage people to think a little bit more historically about mm-hmm. about the privilege right. that it is to vote. Mm-hmm. Um, if you grow up in a country where your voice is never heard, right, through a democratic election, yeah. or where you have no say in the policies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you might feel disempowered in this environment, but you don't really know what it, what it means right. to be mm-hmm. truly disempowered. Yeah. Um, I can tell you about it. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly, right? Or yeah. if you grew up in a country where the elections truly are rigged in yeah. mm-hmm. phenomenal and profound ways, yeah. which does happen in many countries in the yeah. world. And you yeah. see that happening year over year over year. Or if you grow up under a dictator mm-hmm. or a communism or under a monarch of right. ancient times, yeah. you think you have a say in the kingdom? Uh <laughs> You know, when the emperor is, yeah. you know, down the road and is going to send the tax man your way, yeah. you don't have a say about that. Like tell it, you what to do. They tell you yeah. what to do. Yeah. You have to do it or the penalty will be severe. Mm-hmm. Right. And so um, I would just say it's it is even if you feel like you don't love the process or you mm-hmm. don't even love the candidates, yeah. it is a great privilege to be part of a country in which you have a say in the matter. Yeah. yeah. Where you actually have a voice, where yeah. you actually can contribute something in yeah. and um hmm. i feel like at this time in our history there are many people that just so willingly mm. lay down that privilege yeah. or that right i mean yeah. people died for these rights yeah you know people fought 
vehemently for women to have this yeah. right. right. People fought right. vehemently mm -hmm. and died for African Americans to have this yeah. right. And now I can yeah. call you an African American <laughs> no, because you're not, not just an African, African African. African. <laughs> um, I like it. <laughs> um, and um, let's mm. not so easily just yeah. say it doesn't matter. Yeah. But it doesn't matter if I participate. Right. But if you actually interrogate, if you interrogate the logic of the idea, it actually falls because there's not only like one issue on the ballot, right? Yeah. We're voting for like local staff, we're voting yeah. issue one in Ohio, yeah. the other, the new issue one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even if it's like one thing that you're like, I don't like the candidates, like there's still yeah. five other things that you're, yeah. you're voting. So mm -hmm. we got to, we got to vote. Yeah. yeah. We got to express. That's a, that's a, I, I, yeah. And, I, and I actually feel a sense, I mean, maybe this is just weirdly sentimental. I don't know. <laughs> but every election that I have the opportunity to go and vote, like, I just feel a sense of pride to be able to do that. To go yeah. into my local community uh, yeah. and say, I'm going to see the people who are working the mm -hmm. table to, to check you in. Yeah. And guess what? A couple of them live, like, down the street from right. me. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they say, oh, hey, Pastor Nick, good to see you today. Oh, hey, nice yeah. to see you too, you know? And then to go in and to get my ballot and to go into my little thing and fill out, yeah. you know, the different candidates and then walk out to, ha to have it go through the scanner and see an another somebody, you know? Mm -hmm. And very often, it, you know, it, it might be uh, a retiree, you know, that's <laughs> working that area because yeah. they want to contribute something back to their local yeah. community and to our country at large. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it's a really cool, it is cool, really unique thing. It's arguably one of it's a unique way to love your neighbors, sure. like, right? Yeah, you're, you're you're deciding on a matter that, in your estimation, is going to benefit all of us in a particular way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Before we close, uh, Doctor Nick, uh, a lot of people feel uncertain, right? There's a sense of um, I don't know what's going to happen. We kind of spoke about this at the beginning. I don't know what's going to happen if so-and-so becomes president. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. actually on both sides, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone to leave, go to wherever. It was mostly in the 2020 election. Yeah. But uh, firstly, do you personally feel uncertain? And secondly, how do we stay grounded, our church family in particular, in these times that are like so uncertain? Yeah. So maybe help us think. Do I feel uncertain? Sure. In certain mm -hmm. ways, mm -hmm. yeah, because like I said at the beginning, political issues do affect our daily lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the biggest issues of this election yeah. based around economic policies, based mm -hmm. around immigration. I was hearing a story today of a town in Indiana uh, that, you know, had a massive influx of Haitian immigrants and what it's doing in that particular town right now mm -hmm. and the struggles that that's creating yeah. and the opportunities that that's presenting mm -hmm. uh, and the reasons why they're there. Yeah. Um, you know, those, it's easy to hear about that in the news from a distance. You know, right. it's different when it comes to your own town. Yeah. Um, and I think that um, regardless of who's elected, there's going to be certain, there's going to be uncertainties. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the question is, is what do you do with the uncertainty? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how, how does it affect you? And mm -hmm. for me, you know, I, because I believe wholeheartedly that nothing happens outside of the providence of God. Right. And that the promises of Scripture for God's people mm -hmm. are that He will ultimately work things out to our care yeah. and to our good. Mm -hmm. right. While at the same time seeing example, example, example in Scripture, especially in the book of Revelation, but all, right. all the New Testament, that Christians will suffer in this life and things yeah. will be difficult mm -hmm. in this life, but that yeah. doesn't mean that God isn't for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it doesn't mean that you will be undone by mm -hmm. the difficulties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't lose sleep over the election and I don't lose sleep over for myself or for my kids. Yeah. I want certain things for my kids and I want certain things for our country because I love our country. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't live in perpetual anxiety because I know the one who's on the throne. Right. I know this life will have difficulties attached to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know which ones will be mine to bear or yours right. to bear mm -hmm. or my kids to bear. But yeah. one thing is for certain, we will have difficulties. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them will be as a result of politics. Right. <laughs> yeah. Undoubtedly. Yeah. Undoubtedly. Yeah. Um, but I know also the Lord will see us through those mm -hmm. and, um, and continue to provide. So that's the way I look at it. Um, yeah. It, I think it gives me 
an interested involvement and engagement mm. in the process while recognizing what my true purpose is and where my true confidence lies. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's not in Republicans or Democrats. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's helpful. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. And I think too, like with the whole topic of anxiety and maybe this is, you know, it's more of a topic for another time, but I think it does absolutely tie into politics heavily because like you were saying with mm -hmm. your age group, Bruce, about how, you know, you're having families and you're concerned for their futures. Mm -hmm. Like that's the same thing with me too. Is like, I'm, I'm constantly anxious about, you know, the future and like what mm -hmm. my kids will have to yeah. experience someday. And I don't even have kids. So yeah. it's like, it's, it's a, it's like almost like a heavy burden, but yeah. you know, I think it's a process for every Christian to try and like yeah. consciously release that anxiety or try to mm -hmm. consciously, um, reorient our minds to focus back to Christ and the hope that we have in him and that yeah. like you said on um in your sermon on Sunday like mm -hmm. nobody can touch God can't touch this you know right. MC yeah. Hammer so yeah. when you said that yeah. in the, the sermon I was really like yeah that's that a great mindset, way to put it yeah, exactly and that yeah. mindset is not the hmm. same as saying you don't care Right. Up, yeah. yeah. Trusting the Lord yeah. does not mean you don't care about the political process or that you're not involved. Yeah. And that's the false dichotomy that a lot of people want to draw. Yes. Oh, you're just taking the easy way out. You don't care. Yeah. You don't care about the country. You're just yeah. gonna say, Oh, I trust God. That's not the same. <laughs> yeah. You can actually have both. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fully and engaged. Fully engaged trusting. and fully trusting yeah. at the same time. And that's yeah. what I would commend Christians to do. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So helpful. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, and um, we really appreciate you joining us talking about this because this is, I feel like a huge issue. Not only yeah. like just yeah. in our in our country, but like I feel like locally, just people and especially Christians need the reminder to stay involved, yeah. even if it's hard, yeah. even if it's divisive. And are there any final comments you'd like to to give us? Any lasting thoughts? Any uh, political party recommendations. Oh, and it is. <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. It's I a certainly trap. have plenty of political party recommendations, <laughs> and if you want to talk to me privately yeah. about that, we can talk. Okay, we'll do. We'll do. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I would say, Sophia, uh, don't give up the privilege yeah. that it is to participate yep. in the process. Mm -hmm. Trust the Lord mm -hmm. for the results. Mm -hmm. Whether Donald Trump wins this election or Kamala Harris wins this election. Uh, it will impact us. Yeah. And yeah. it's not, however, going to impact my trust in the Lord. Yeah. Right. We hope this was more than anything encouraging uh, to our church family uh, to think well about politics um, because we're representing Christ and, and His yeah. kingdom. So thank you for joining us and yeah. sharing some oh. very helpful thoughts. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, and also we hope that just maybe you're craving another cup of coffee. I don't know, are you guys wanting another mm. one or are you kind of coffeeed out now? It's getting pretty late. It's getting pretty yeah, late. You know, I'm of that age, Sophia, where it's like you drink coffee too late in the day. <laughs> We're going to do a fun little game also in the comments, a barista battle bracket. And mm. we're going to basically every episode we're going to have two different types of coffee or two different kinds of ways to make coffee. And we're going to have um, voting in the comments to see what type of coffee ends up on top and so our first one is going to be espresso versus cold brew what are your guys' opinions i have a rather strong opinion on the matter oh get it strong espresso. <laughs> get it strong with you like that uh, you like that no oh, that was a little a bit joke. of a dad joke yeah yeah uh, espresso all the way espresso yes i mean i like cold brew but espresso definitely huh yeah i don't remember the last time i just like went straight for an espresso so i'll probably be cold brew although i can see why you would pick espresso what about you what do you think i am a cold brew girly <laughs> um my the first beverage that got me into coffee the first type of coffee making that got me into yeah. coffee was cold brew cold brew yeah so um yeah i think i gotta go with that but when i was in paris i did have a lot of espresso and it was something else so uh, there you go i yeah. i do have a soft spot for espresso whether you're watching us on YouTube, like, subscribe. Um, if you're watching us on a audio platform, um, follow us, um, leave us comments. We hope to hear from you guys and hear your feedback on our first episode here. So yeah, until next time, keep persevering in Christ. And we hope that you keep brewing that coffee and conversation.